Hi, this is Dave. Welcome back to another episode of Dr. Dave's Diversions. In this episode, we're going to be working on my 64 and uh, fixing a problem that I didn't know I had until I watched uh, Adrian Black's video of last week uh, called uh, 2021 C64 Reparathon number two. So uh, stick around. For me, there's no more iconic 1980s 8-bit computing experience than this. Starting up the Commodore 64, the Commodore 1702 video monitor, and the Commodore 1541 single floppy disk. So in that episode of, uh, of Adrian's uh, Digital Basement, Adrian was about to wrap up one of the 64s from his previous episode. The, um, and he noticed that when he typed some of the keys, that there was sort of a wavy pattern, a flickering line, a horizontal line moving up and down in some of the characters. Well, as soon as I saw that, I said, that's just what the 64 does. I've had this 64 since 1983. It's uh, one of the first uh, motherboards. Uh, it was manu this was manufactured in, uh, mostly in 82. I got it in 83. It's um, assembly uh, 326298. And that happened to be the early revision that, that Adrian was also working on that episode. And what he saw was this phenomenon. See how there's this kind of flickering up and down in some of the characters? Well, like I said, I've seen that my whole life. This machine did that from the day I got it. So I was really surprised to learn that reasonably he thought we shouldn't be doing that because he'd seen a lot of later machines. So uh, what I decided to do was uh, go online and f buy a new character ROM and replace it just like he did and see if that fixes that problem. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go to the bench and show you how that worked. And there'll be a little drama. You'll see me injure myself by just pulling a chip. But, um, but the, the, in the broader context, the interesting thing I think that I want to share with you is this is the third time at least um, regarding the 64 that I've learned that my 64 had a problem that I didn't know was there until I learned it from the community on YouTube. Because uh, there's these kind of half problems. And some of the people in the comments on Adrian's video said, you know, you should have a special bin for these old chips that you take out that kind of work, but not, not totally work. And uh, the, the three that, that I can share with you, well, I'll, I'll, let's save them to the end. I'll share the other two there. Let's, let's get on to uh, seeing if we can fix that problem. I'll show it to you on my machine on the bench, and then, uh, and then we'll address that and come back. So here we are at the 64. It's powered up. Um, you can see I've got nothing on the screen right now. And if I choose a character like, for instance, the up arrow, See, um, I here. Here's the phenomenon that I'm used to seeing, and I just uh, had never done this thing that Adrian did, where you just put a lot of them. But in, when it's in some rows in some parts of the screen, I get that wave through it, and other times not. So the experiment we're going to do is um, I purchased a replacement character ROM, and uh, you know, and we'll we'll take the well, the, on my machine, um, that chip happens to be socketed, so I bought this one off of eBay, and uh, it's ooh, it's also dated it's the 14th week of 84, I guess. So that's probably good news, that it's a different version of the chip than I had. So, all right, well, let's uh, power down, take the 64 apart, and uh, do that. So I've removed the screws from the bottom of this, and... Something that I'll, probably a lot of you know, but takes, but it's worth reminding, is how do you open a bread bin without breaking the tabs? And there's a really neat uh, entry about this on a web on a web blog called the Silicon Underground by David uh, Farquhar. The whole blog is really is really great. But the technique that he says that's always worked for me is basically he says I think never never lift the top of the case more than like 30 degrees. So then you can't break those tabs in the back. So bring it up like this and then work it loose. It's loose on one side. Like that. And so you can see that the tabs are still fine. Now we'll disconnect the power here and disconnect the keyboard. So what are we doing here? Well, here, here's the character ROM. And on my machine, it says 901225, 
Well, it says Moss, 901-225-01, 1982 CBM, 4982B. So I think it's manufactured in the 49th week of 82. And uh, this new one that I just got off of eBay says Moss, 901-225-01B, 1982CBM, um, 1484 AMD. So a couple years, almost two years newer, or a year and a half newer. So all we're going to do is pop this guy out. Whoa. Oh my. Well, didn't do very good with those pins. And I'm bleeding. How not to lift a chip. And these pins look straight. So apparently the, the guy that I, or the, well, the person that I bought this from used to run a Commodore store forever ago and had, had some old stock stuff. All right, so we got that in. The 64, I'm just flipping it over and putting the screws back in. You'll notice that this is, um, this is serial number P0013851. So for the this P series, which I believe is made in Pennsylvania, it's the 130,518th in that series. So I think it's like, you know, on the order of one of the first two or 300,064s that were made. Yeah. Oh, so what I wanted to do is show um, a trick that uh, Fran Blanche uses on her channel and Adrian Black has adopted. But if you haven't seen this, putting screws back in on these machines or maintaining to be sure you don't strip it. Always use a manual screwdriver and turn it backwards first to let it set in there and find find the existing, you know, screw hole uh, screw threads that are in that plastic, and then turn it forward and be sure it turns with ease. And that way you you're sure you'll never cross thread into this you know delicate plastic. All right, let's power it up. See what it looks like. Okay, that looks the same. Now what happens when you take this key? Oh, sure enough, it's fixed. Nice. Well, that was an easy one. So that's cool. I mean, a problem that's been there for, well, how many years is that? It's been there since 1983. So uh, that's fixed now. And uh, and I've got that spare uh, character ROM that I can use if I want to. It's really never bothered me. You know, in a game or something, you never notice it. Occasionally you see it. In fact, in the, one of the videos I did about the Casio calculator, uh, importing basic uh, basic code to the Casio calculator, I saw it happen with that up arrow. In some places on the screen, it doesn't do it. In other places, that it does. So it, w it annoyed me a little bit, but only because I was showing, you know, you all on YouTube. So the other two problems that I discovered similarly was, well, where I started off when I get back into retro computing with my 64, I ended up building this, uh, this, um, this particular power supply. Uh, if I wanted to replace the power supply with a modern one, I needed to be really careful because that, uh, and because that original or that early 64 doesn't have heat sinks on the voltage regulators. It was ridiculous, right? But Commodore remedied that, but I didn't know because I wasn't part of the community and I'd just been using that machine. So um, I bought the Electroware 2-in-1 PSU and upgraded it uh, to have 30 watts of DC power. And now I use it to power my 64 and feel safe about it because I know that I did the measurements and I checked the voltages and I checked the temperatures. That's one of the ones that I learned from the community. The other one that I learned was when I did the video about using uh, the Hearsay 1000, of speech recognition system that I plugged into back here. I plugged that in and I remember using it back in the day on my 128, uh, but I plugged it on here and it wouldn't work because the restore key it didn't work. So I went to the community again and said, well, what's up, what's up with the C64 restore key? And I found uh, a video by Mark at the retro channel uh, showing me exactly what I needed to do, which capacitor I needed to replace to get the restore key working and I got that working. So. So not only, uh, you know, with these old machines, keeping them running, do we have to deal with the obvious problems 
Sometimes just being in the community infor informs you about how the machine should be working. So you know that even something that it did, all three of those were things that were problems with this machine when it came out back in 82 and 83, and I've been able to fix. So not only do I have a working 64, that uh, it worked better than it did back in 1983. So thanks to the community for that. Adrian's Digital Basement, uh, Mark at the Retro Channel, and uh, like Frank, uh, who, who showed me some of the stuff about how to put the, uh, put the uh, heat sinks on the voltage regulators. I'll put links to those videos in the comments. But anyway, I uh, just want to share that quick little fix with you. Uh, thank you, and thanks to the community for helping me out with that. Uh, coming up next, I'm, I'm in parallel, I'm working on my old Linux machines, uh, 46 and better uh, PCs from the early 90s, and, uh, and we'll move on to some of that stuff. So uh, if you like this kind of stuff, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.